At the gate of the Sacro Bosco Park, there is an inscription, a question in Latin. It says, O traveler, tell me if all that you are about to see is merely art or was it made to bewilder you? Yes, we certainly saw at least one layer of the reality made to bewilder indeed. Something that I guess most of the visitors never even notice. Namely, that all the statues are not made from scratch, but instead they're skillfully resurrected ruins of rocked rooms very heavily eroded, which are found by thousands in the region. Being made in the 16th century, of course, the statues of the Sacro Bosco, or locally known as Parco dei Mostri, Park of the Monsters, surely have historic value. And this video is gonna cover a somewhat overlooked aspect of that value. They were made in the spirit of antiquity and the people who made them were much closer to the mentality of the people in the antiquity or at least what we call antiquity now because there are different interpretations of when it actually unfolded on the stage of the theater of earth but that's a separate topic. As we saw with our own eyes, sadly, the numerous antique rocket ruins in Italy simply lay overgrown by thorny bushes. Even if some common people like me wanted to see them and clean them, that's not allowed. You need permits, which are of course difficult or impossible to get. But in the in the medieval times, when the Sacro Bosco statues were made, they were not yet that overgrown. And the people, the common people, understood them much better than we do, their spirit, their message, and also valued and respected them much more than we do. The penguins create this deceptive impression that they care about the antique artifacts by putting some almost meaningless small pieces of pottery in expensive museums with lots of maintenance required. But the sad truth behind the scenes is that when it comes to really big and important stuff, that they cement over, destroy or bury back in the ground. In some cases, they actually excavated some rock cut via covers and they buried them back in Italy and in this very video you're gonna see stuff that they cemented over very recently and that's much older than the statues of Sacro Bosco. It is an interesting place worth visiting and that's why I'm publishing this complete virtual tour. I'm gonna show you all the statues. And actually, in this video, you're gonna see more than an average person can see under normal circumstances. Now you are famous. Now, let's take as an example this statue. This is how it looks on the back side. We see two types of tool marks. The longer marks, which are characteristic of the really old rock cut ruins. They are often too long to be chisel marks, but maybe the stone was way softer at that time and they were like really scooping it instead of breaking it off with chisel or they could have been left by machines as well because the older rock-cutting civilization was using machines as well. 
And the second type of tool marks are the standard chisel marks of the medieval work. We see the older tool marks on the typical for that layer of rock cut ruins, canals. The canals and unkempt ruins without statues on them of course continue outside, right outside the area of the park for tens of kilometers. is nothing else but the remains of a room as we can see from the big long old tool marks and all around we can see more of the remains of the older rock cutting layers though those who are not looking for them may not notice them because they are not cleaned by the maintenance crew of the park they are also ignored in the official information about the park, so basically they are out of the spotlight. Here are some more right angles from the old layers. While on the tortoise, which is definitely medieval, we see the typical standard chisel marks. short segment with ancient vehicle tracks got spared by the time and the park designers. And what I find most fascinating about this uh, park is that the deities of the statues of the older rock ruins are looking at us through the eyes of these 16th century statues. The statues of the original older rock cut ruins they are very few, they are gone almost completely. Either they are deep under the ground because nobody excavates, or whatever was easily accessible near the surface has been long ago privatized by the black archaeologists, the suppliers of the private collections of those to whom the laws for normal mortals do not apply. And on the very few samples that we can actually see, are these very same sirenas and the other deities that we see in this 16th century park.
out of all the ruins from the older layers, this older was definitely the most interesting. Even on what it seems to be its bottom side, it has these uh, two marks from the excavator machines. Here, from this angle, they are more clearly visible. So if we see two marks at the bottom, maybe it wasn't like a rocket ruin after all, maybe it was quite a huge megalithic stone. But the rest of it is not less puzzling, no matter how you imagine to turn it upwards, the carvings just don't match in terms of directions, always something will be awfully tilted. The same sirena which we saw on the earlier huge statues. If you ever happen to visit Parco de Mostri, it will be very easy to spot the older ruins. Just look for the long tool marks. Here is yet another of the typical for the older ruins channels. Here and there we have even small segments of the covers. This looks more like one of those uh, tracks that actually consist of lines of footprints. We saw many of those in the episode about the via covers. Not sure to which period this uh, statue dates but the platform on which it stands with the typical channels is definitely from the older period. Yet another very interesting boulder, especially the top surface where these rather big scoop marks are visible, very similar to those of the unfinished obelisk in the Aswan quarry. Also we saw identical marks in Spain again at rocket ruins and in Bulgaria a year ago at the site called Perpericon. The same marks are found in ancient quarries of Peru and also Russia. And as usual, for all places where older rocket ruins are found, they are the so-called necropolises. Really, and that's an area where all around is what is again officially called cartridge, uh, allegedly made by thousands and millions of carts passing on the same route exactly by the centimeter every day. 
So if we believe the stories about the millions of cartridges and the necropolises scattered between them in some places, the cartridges even um, intersect with necropolises, that means that those people were digging the stone to put their dead relatives in these cavities and then they were driving their carts all the time like crazy just a few meters away and in some cases even through the alleged necropolises even if we take only the so-called carts that we saw during these two expeditions imagine we take all the modern people of italy that live now here and join them with all the Etruscans and all the Romans that lived here, still, even if these people drive carts day and night, abandoning all other work, still, they wouldn't make that many cart roots if they were really a result of wear on the stone from too many carts passing on the very same tracks. I'm not endorsing that the tracks are cart roots indeed, or that they were left on a hard stone or caused by uh, repeated passing vehicles. I don't believe in all those uh, statements. I'm just telling the full story to illustrate how absurd is what the penguins are trying to convince us. This is uh, yet another boulder with uh, some very eroded uh, carvings from the older layer of rock cut ruins. Most visitors give no attention to it, they use it as a bench. I saw them stepping on it, uh, kicking the statues. It is not uh, included in the official map with statues. It is also not fenced, like the medieval carvings. And that's why people don't see any importance on it, although we have these uh, rare carvings. One is a reclining figure here, something like the reclining Buddha position, and the other one is a face. I think they survived actually because they had some sort of uh, protection because this has always been a private property even now it is a private park of the Orsini family. Probably a lot of the rock cut ruins were rich with carvings like this but they were looted by the black archaeologists. One corner of the park I'm not going to review and that's the tilted house. Many people get sick when they even get near it, what to speak of entering. I got very sick when I visited uh, two years ago. This time I felt the headaches at such a distance when I took this photograph and I decided to keep distance. The amount of older rock cut ruins on the territory of the park is just indescribable. Steps, maybe parts of uh, via caverns or some other premises. Tracks or excavator marks, countless niches. The negligence with which they are treated is, as everywhere else, unbelievable. Here, with this uh, freshly made cement pad, they have covered old steps and excavator marks. There was a bunch of very clear uh, excavator marks exactly at this spot. You can see them in the video I made about 
this place two years ago and this is all that is left from them now just one single scratch a perfect illustration how the oldest type of ruins the rock cut ruins are being systematically destroyed one small step at a time Besides Parco dei Mostri in Bomarzo, the Orsini clan has got one more very similar park, simply called Parco Orsini, and that's in Tigliano. Although it cannot rival Bomarzo, neither in terms of size nor in terms of grandeur, still the Tigliano Orsini Park is a charming small place with scattered ruins that as if make you feel that sometimes our reality gets transparent and we get occasional glimpses of the fairy world. <laughs> <laughs> 